perfect. Ah, oh, did you feel that breakthrough? <laughs> Worship till you break through. It's a good word, isn't it? Oh. I'm going to read some scriptures first and then talk. So I want you to turn to Acts 20 if you've got your Bibles with you. Or if your Bibles are on your phone, turn on your phone. How's that? I bless you. Well, well, while you're going there, um, just um, my favorite angel story, right? You know, we, we do have the story of Mary, but, but my favorite one is, is in the book of Acts. I, I don't know where it is, but I just feel like I'm supposed to share. Is, do you remember? It's Peter who's in prison, and his buddies are like praying, like, God, get him out of prison. God, get him out of prison. Get him out of prison. And, and then all of a sudden, Peter in prison, like, the shackles fall off. He's got this angel. And, and it's, it's like, it's kind of like the Mission Impossible movie I saw this week. <coughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, he, oops, embarrassed. <laughs> It, it's like the angel says, follow me. And, he, and like they, they start walking and all the little doors and the cells go ching, ching, ching. And the coolest thing is that Peter thinks this is like a prayer life moment. Like, it, I just, I really feel like the Lord is taking us to deeper intimacy with him. And as I read the book of Acts, the things that we read in the book of Acts are meant to be normal in our lives. Like, I, and I feel like if I were to confess honestly that they aren't my devotional prayer life, which is not too bad, is about to get better. And I feel like it's the same for all of us. There, there's a new depth in intimacy and, and we need to... Um, are, you, are you not... Trish, you didn't, like when those kids were praying for that frog, you didn't say to them, oh, I'm so doubtful this will happen. You just let it unfold. Even though honestly in your heart you're going, prayed for many an animal. <laughs> so we want to we wanna honor the vulnerability of, of being authentic. And yet at the same time, we want to raise up faith and expectation and belief and have the childlike faith that sits over that little plastic container and watches a leg come back to life in Jesus' name. And so Peter, if you remember the story, I just feel like I, feel like I need to address the angel thing because my sense was, that's weird. Like, don't, isn't the Holy Spirit the one who ministers to us? Isn't it God's presence? Jeff's sending us over into the corner to hang out with angels. I just want you to know, angels, like the, the, the apostles and the disciples partnered with heaven and angels were part and parcel of that. Right? In, in the Acts chapter 10, 8 to 12, the story that I've been reading, you know, an angel appeared. That is meant to be normative for the body. And, and I'll be honest, this is like, how many of you have ever been stretched in your faith? We're growing together. Amen? So, so the, the Peter, all of a sudden, he gets out of prison. He's kind of looking around, probably smells the air. Do you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> and he realizes it. The Bible says he realizes it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a vision. It was actual. The angel had actually walked him out of prison and left him hanging out on the streets, a free man. And so his first reaction is like to go to his people. 
he goes to his people. He's banging on the door. People! Do you know me? And they're, <laughs> they're so fervently in prayer. Oh, Jesus set him free, set him free, set him free. And they're, he's banging on the door. Do you know me? Set him free, set him free. So finally some woman gets up, goes to the door, opens the door, <gasps> slams the door. Do you remember this? Slams the door in his face. He's like been set free. He's banging on the door. He's like escaped. He's banging on the door of his people. Shh. Opens the door. It's like, ah. What the heck? Do you remember what they said they thought he was? His angel. Do you know what that suggests to me? It's normative for those Christians. I don't know why they'd slam the door on his face. It's like, go back and get Peter. <laughs> but they thought it was an angel, hit Peter's angel. So I, I, I share that just to kind of, if, if you had that moment of, <gasps> what are we doing? I, I really feel like angels are going to become more part of our life than we've ever experienced before. Because God's on the move and he uses angels to partner with the kingdom of heaven. All right, Acts 20, because you're there. 18 to 27. So I, re I really, f I believe every one of us is passionate about Jesus and I want us to hear that passion articulated in the word of God. When they arrived, Paul declared you know that from day one, from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears and have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. Humbly, with many tears and endurance. Humbly, with many tears, I've endured many trials, endurance. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I've had one message for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and having our faith in our Lord Jesus. I am not, and now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. Everyone say, bound by the Spirit. I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. So again, here you see that I don't know what lies before me. I know I'm bound to go to Jerusalem. Holy Spirit has put that on my heart. I don't know what waits, but I know that the pattern of my life is that consistently Holy Spirit tells me that, that whoa, city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead but my life I love this line but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus the work that's beautiful <laughs> sorry <laughs> angels are playing in the background Turn a nursery toy into music. Sorry, um, <laughs> I got distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> I confess. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Could, uh, Mike, can you close the door at the back? <laughs> I'm a sucker for good music. I just... And now that I know that none of you of whom I have preached, listen to this, and now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again, I declare that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault.
My life's not wor is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Holy Spirit wants to put a fire and fan into flame that truth in each one of your lives today. I, I've been sharing over the last couple of weeks since I got back from holiday that the word that I had from the Lord was visitation ready. Are you visitation ready? And I love... I love what Paul says in Acts 21, 13, if you want to go there. It's the only spot in the Gospel of Acts, I think, where he says, I'm ready. You ready? See, he's had a whole bunch of prophets say, don't go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's going to be awkward, difficult. They're bang on. They're, like, they are bang on. The prophets are bang on. They're not speaking truth. And yet, Paul is in this space where he's hearing the words and the, he's being requested, don't go, don't go. And yet I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. He said, verse 13, Why all this weeping? They're breaking my heart. I am ready. Not only to be jailed at Jerusalem, but even to die for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am ready ready Acts 26 12 to 19 let's go there here Paul is he's in the courts he's made his way um, he's in front of uh, uh, one of the your majesty uh, Felix I believe it is and he says Your Majesty, as I was on the road, a light from heaven brighter than the sun shone down on me and my companions. We all fell down and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's useless for you to fight against my will. <laughs> Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the Lord replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get to your feet, for I have appeared to you to appoint you as my servant and witness. You are to tell the world what you have seen and what I will show you in the future. You are to tell the world what I have seen, what you, what you have seen, and what I will show you in the future. And I will rescue you from both your own people and the Gentiles. Yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan and to God. They will receive forgiveness of their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. And so King Agrippa, oh, it's Agrippa here. I have obeyed that vision from heaven. I, I want you to say that with me. I have obeyed that vision from heaven. Again, I have obeyed that vision from heaven. And then if you go to Acts 26, 28 to 29, Agrippa burst out, like, Paul, are you insane? Do you want me to become like you, a Christian? And Paul says these words. Well, Agrippa said, Do you think you can persuade me to be a, become a Christian so quickly? Paul replied, oh, this is another, Write this on your fridge. Whether quickly or not. What's the opposite of quickly? Perseverance. See, I remember Bill Johnson was saying, you need to know faith is the power to work the miraculous and to endure.
You didn't, you didn't think endurance was a sign of faith, did you? Whether quickly or not, I pray to God that both of you and everyone here in this audience might become the same as I am, except for these chains. Um, forgot to kind of mention this week, the Wednesday night we have God Talk, and Thursday afternoon we have the John Wimber God Talk, 7.30 till 9, Wimber, 1 till 3. God Talk's unique in that it's encouraged if, if you're part of the family here and you want to come, bring the person you're having God conversations with. It, it's kind of going to be like an impromptu, but my encouragement is I, I really feel like God wants, like it's a kind of impromptu session, so we'll have topic conversations that guide us. But I, like, I would love if we've got like witches and coven people and that are having spiritual encounters and looking for opportunities to unpack their experience and to in the unpacking of their experience, guess what we get to unpack? Our experience. You can bring a carpenter or a plumber too, like they don't have to be part of the coven. <laughs> oh. Quickly or not. So vegetation ready, are you ready when God asks that question what is he meaning I want to tell you off the top what he's not meaning God when he says are you visitation ready he's not telling you to go home and clean your house sit in a little prayer room with him and wait until someone comes and knocks on your door those might all be very good things to do <laughs> your house may need cleaning you may need to lock yourself in a room and spend some time with God. But that's not what we're talking about when we say visitation ready. When we say visitation ready, I really feel like the things that we read about in the book of Acts are about to unfold before us. And to be ready, we need to be in that place of intimacy with God. So, Joe, the next one is, what is it? And, and I'm suggesting, yes, it's the cross, But I'm suggesting that intimacy plus faithfulness are going to be the key for the things that God wants to do. Uh, even this morning, we, on Praise Team, we were talking about um, not by might, but by my spirit. How many of you, like, like on so many level, have worked hard trying to get people into the kingdom? Not by might, but by my spirit. And this is where I feel like intimacy is, is so key. And I feel like God is going to be upping it a notch for upping it, deepening it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like speak in the terms of levels. Do you know what I mean? Or you're at this, this level. But I do feel like God wants to move in our hearts and in our relationship. You know, you've often seen me do this, right? Hearing from God, hearing from God. I believe, I believe more than impressions, God wants to have us flow of conversation with us like he does with, with the, the apostles and, and the, the God-fearing people like uh, Ananias and Cornelius. Cornelius wasn't even a Christian and he's having this incredible flow and he says, I've seen your prayers. I've seen the offerings that you give to the poor. He wasn't even a Christian. And yet, and yet what was God's heart? What was God's heart? To bring him into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He goes to him and says, and says, there's this guy named Peter. Go send people, get him, and bring him so that you can hear. And so the visitation that we're hoping to get ready for is this combination of intimacy with God between you and God and then someone else that God is visiting. And then in the middle... All those stories had this beautiful... I'm gonna, last, two weeks ago, I poo-pooed the whole notion of obedience. Forget what my poo-poo, I repent. In, in Acts chapter 5, I think it's 35, somewhere like this, says, the Holy Spirit is given to whom? Those who obey. I, 
I use the word faithfulness because I think obedience looks totally different from our conception of obedience. We think, I remember one lady where there was the, the whole marriage vow thing and, and she refused to have to, to honor and obey in, in the wedding vows. And her reason was, I ain't no dog. And, and so obedience has become like this blind thing where I want you to use faithfulness in our intimacy. Like this was the beautiful thing for me. As I'm reflecting on intimacy, I'm going, oh my gosh, faith is intimacy. When you're, when you're in love, so this is why I'm using the word devote, um, devotion. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. How do I get to that place? I remember when I was first when I was first married. That sounds like. Anyways, when I was first married, I the, I'd wake up in the I'm in I am a morning person, or at least think I am. I I would wake up in the morning. Paula at that time, not a morning person. Kind of like it's like a computer in slow mo, you know, waiting for that thing to boot up. And I say this in total love, okay? So in the morning, I'm, I'm like eager to talk, right? Like I would, oh, good morning! How are you this morning? Because like I am like, I love this girl, and I just want to talk to her, right? It's like, ah! And it was like, don't talk to me until I talk to you first. <laughs> There is a good kingdom principle in this. There is. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, so I would like, I would buy the coffee. I'd be like the little puppy dog. <laughs> can I talk, can I talk, can I talk? When are you gonna talk? Cause like I'm excited when she's gonna talk to me. She's gonna talk to me so <laughs> Morning Jeff. <gasps> Come on, do you, do, do you know what I mean? There's just that whole kind of, yeah, right? And, and there's a certain, I want you to see the devotion side. The devotion side is, I'm in, it, I'm in her presence. Same with God. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting in his presence. I'm excited. Oh, I love this guy. I love this guy. I love God. Oh, you're so amazing, Jesus. You're so amazing. I'm, and I'm, but I'm, I'm not going to talk until he starts talking. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to talk until he starts talking because that's the rule. <laughs> I'm waiting until he talks. It, how, how, how many, like you go right into prayer and like you don't give God a minute. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. He's good. I love you, God. Oh, I worship you. I praise your name. You're amazing. Oh, I'm like the puppy dog with God. Now, it's really funny because like this fast forward to like this morning. For whatever reason, Paula has now become like this morning person and I'm still the same way. Do you know what I mean? Like this morning, I couldn't leave the house because like she's up. She's in her chair. She's got her coffee. She's willing to talk to me. Like what's happened? <laughs> I kept, I kept going out to leave the door and then I'd come back and I'd kiss her on the forehead. I don't know, I just have to keep coming back and kiss you. And then I'd come back and another kiss on the forehead. You know, I was like, this is exciting. I feel like God is taking us to the this is exciting. <laughs> Intimacy, that, that connection with God, that devotion. And I want to put it in the terms of devotion. I'm devoted to you, Jesus. I am all yours. I am all in. The, 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 whatever you want, talk to me. Do you know what I mean? We're in that whole kind of intimacy. And then, this is, so that's, that's kind of like this. That's, that's this. That's time, right? Like it takes time. It takes time for me to walk to the front door. Normally, I'm forgetting something. I just couldn't, I had to kiss you again. I'm sorry. Oh, I got to do it. Go back again. Do you know what I mean? To spend that time. And then, in the intimacy, here's the beautiful thing that we learn from these stories. It's in the intimacy that my mission is discovered. Amen. It's in the intimacy. Do you know when, it, when your mission comes out of the intimacy, oh, you have faith. You're not trying to have faith. You have faith. You have it. Because it came from that place of intimacy. You have faith. 
So often we've been taught faith is something I have to muster. Faith is something I have to stretch for. Faith is something I have to work on. I'm saying have intimacy and let God reign in your life. Um, Heidi Baker, I was so blessed. Forgive me for kind of going on the computer, but I couldn't get it to work any other way. It's just from her book. And uh, it was talking exactly about this point. Dear Jesus. So, so she's saying in, in her life, hundreds of churches, crisis after crisis, she writes, and yet seeing the kingdom advance, seeing bright revival breakthrough, she writes this, even when we see revival break forth, Jesus told me his favorite time of my day is the morning. At one point, God said, give me your mornings. Remember last week I shared with you, there is one thing you have that God doesn't. Time. On this planet, there is one thing you have that God doesn't, and it's time. And so he knows when you give it to him, what a sacrifice that is. What an offering that is. How beautiful it is. Back to Heidi. She, she writes, so, so for those of you that don't know, her soaking, she goes snorkeling, she goes for a bike ride. She, like, these, these are ways that she spends time with Jesus. She says, he loves it when I snorkel or ride my bike or simply lay down in a quiet place with my heart fixed on him. This is returning to Paul and giving that... Love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, you're amazing. Jesus, thank you. Shh, forget the prayer list. They're good, but he's better. I love to pray in that underwater garden. I, oh, yeah, I love to pray in that underwater garden. I love to pray while I'm looking at his beauty riding my bike. It's just me adoring him. I do not pray through a list of intercessory needs, though that's a good thing to do. I do not tell him how to feed the people because he knows how to feed them. <laughs> I want to know nothing but Christ and Christ crucified. I just swim or ride or rest and love him. Holy, 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 worthy, worthy, worthy. I love you. I love you. And he spoke to me. It's, again, think of Paul, think of Paul and me when we first got married. Oh, come on, I just can't wait to talk to you. I just can't wait to talk to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. And he spoke, I'm all ears. Heidi, this morning time is my favorite time of day. He loves our intimacy more than the miracles. He loves more than seeing villages saved and even more than seeing orphans fed. Romans 7, 4, you need to, under, you need to see this. Heidi has laid down her lives for all those things. But God says more than all those things. I'm going to read it again. He loves our intimacy more than the miracles. More than seeing villages saved. And even more than seeing orphans fed. This morning on the praise team, oh my God, do you know every one of us has like God talking to us all the time and the treasures, I look out and I go, I wish you could all get up here and talk at the same time with all the things God's speaking to you. Another moment Lori had where he was just saying, he was reading the word and one of the lines that jumped out of that, we are God's inheritance. We are his inheritance. Do you know, like this is what it's saying, like more valuable than anything else in the world is you to him and your neighbor to him. It's why Paul says, 
If not quickly, then however long it takes, my hope is that you can become just like me who's connected to the God of the universe. He spoke to Heidi. This morning time is my favorite time, right? Romans 7, 4 teaches us in order to bear fruit, it says because we're, we're united with Christ, in order to bear fruit to God, we must be intimate with Jesus. All fruitfulness flows from a place of laid down love. All fruit in the, fruitfulness flows from intimacy. God, this is, hear this, God longs to be loved. He wants to know that he is more important than revival. He must be uh, more of a priority than the multitudes, than the fruit, than the miracles. What, when we are in love, in that in love with him, fruit happens. It is effortless in love. I have one goal, and that is to be such an intimate lover of Jesus that I am a resting place for the Holy Spirit. I want to be so one with him that I become like him, love like him, and radiate his very nature until I become more, a resting place for his presence. More happens in a single minute in the anointing than in a lifetime of labor and efforts. Come on. We, we can do nothing apart by our own efforts. It is not by might, but by, power, but by power, but only by His Spirit. We can do nothing apart from His presence, like my morning snorkel, swim, or bike ride. Our entire ministry must flow from the Holy Spirit. Whoa. Whew. There in the place in the Spirit is where you can cast your nets into the Ezekiel 47 river when you live inside the very heart of Jesus. Oh, there's so much more. You just have to buy the book. There you go, Heidi, a plug for you. Living Underwater. So, Joe, can I have that faithfulness and obedience? Intimacy equals, intimacy plus faithfulness, we see the kingdom advancing. I just, I, and so I'm, there's this call from heaven once again, yes, grow in intimacy. Grow in intimacy. Time, like one of my favorites is thinking of the word. Uh, Mike Baton realized that, um, well, one, he hated reading. But he realized he was actually in the car for more than two to three hours a day. And so he has gone from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, three or four times, listening to the word of God. And it becomes a part of you. you don't, how many of you know you can read the Bible and not understand it, and it's okay? Let God use it. But you've got to be in it for him to use it in you. Oh... Now, the other side of intimacy, devotion, faithfulness. And I want to use faithfulness and obedience together. So faithfulness is, God has shown me something. Paul says, I have been faithful to the vision that I first saw. And, and that vision, remember, it was the reality of Jesus and the things that he would show him in the future. And so for us to be faithful to the things that God has revealed to us. It doesn't get... You don't have to be faithful to the things God hasn't revealed to you. I just thought I'd let you off the hook for a second. You were feeling the pressure. But see the faith that comes being faithful to the things that God has revealed to you. Do you see the faith in that? And where do those things come from? Intimacy. I, if, if you've been with me for years, I, I have never wanted to operate out of duty and responsibility. Some of you may want to grab onto that and think, that's the way. My heart, and sometimes even at the risk of ministry, is that it flows 
out of intimacy. Obedience, can, can we see obedience in this new light? That, that, it, that it's not a religious checklist of to-dos or must-dos, but I choose because I know. I, I was going to go through, but we don't have time. I was going to go through Philip and the Ethiopian, Ananias and Saul, Cornelius and Peter. Each one of those in Acts 8 to 10 have, are these stories of this beautiful thing where God is encountering someone somewhere and he's encountering someone else somewhere and the whole thing is that they're meant to meet in the middle somehow so that his purposes can be fulfilled. And so there are people out there that God is encountering right now as you take time and are intimate with him that he is preparing for you and only you to meet. And all it takes is that intimacy to know and to be sensitive to the leading and the prompting and the, and the move of God on your heart. And you will whoa, know clearly. I, I feel like there's a whole new increased level on the clarity piece. That we're going to be having full conversations. Like in, in, in those stories, it's go down south, go sit on this corner, do this. Like I really feel like God is going to be giving us those kind of things. But it's, it's going to, to be ready, we have to grow in intimacy. So it, it's going to, it may feel awkward. You want to hear my awkward? Yep. So, um, the summer, getting to know some of my kids' friends, want to get into conversations about spiritual stuff. They, they begin sharing about uh, a family member, and my heart, my heart, like they're having these encounters, they're having these experiences. And how many of you know, like, how many of you know God is trying to get through to people before they know Jesus? How many of you know, I remember, remember talking to Doc, the one thing, for those of you, there's a big, big biker guy that's a friend of mine. And, and the day he got changed was when I went to this little bike blessing, about six motorcycles, and I stood in front of all these big bikers. I mean, like, they were big. And I, I remember saying... This was when I was like, oh, Jesus, do you? What he wanted me to say was, you need to know that as, just as much as God has a plan for your life, so too does the devil. And whose plan are you going to choose? It was the most like fire and brimstone I ever got. But I'm listening to the story and, I, and I, see, I see the tension of kingdoms at work in this family's life of like God wanting to break through and, the, and this hunger and then, and then the enemy and the destruction and the fear and the oppression and all this kind of stuff. And, and my heart is just like, it, it's like my life is not worth living until every living being knows the goodness of Jesus Christ. And you believe that too because you know his goodness. And so I go to him and I say, Lord, remember two weeks, three weeks ago, we affirmed, like I had, I had read in my, deck, in my word from the Lord about visitation reading where he had said the invitations had already been sent. And then I spoke to one of my intercessors who said, oh, that's why I did that. Because God had put it on their hearts two weeks before to release the angels with the invitations to the kingdom of heaven. so sweet. Donna goes, I didn't get it, but I've stopped asking God questions. If he tells me to send angels with invitations, I send them. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm reflecting on, on this family member, and I go, Lord, have you sent them an invitation? He said, yes, I did last Saturday. And I'm like, Okay, now you have to live your sermon. The next step would be to go ask him how. Right? If we're going to have this conversation going. How? Holy Spirit says, in a country song. I'm like, this is freaking me out. I stop here. I, I'm, I'm being honest with you that I stop. I know there's more. 
But how many of you, like, you start feeling God move, and it's like, oh, my goodness. It's like you're at the top of the roller coaster. Right? It's going to move fast. So anyways, two weeks later, I've been, like, trying to wait for the moment where I'm going to get a chance to talk to this family person. The person I'm talking to says, well, they're not home, but you can talk to my other family person because they're just like the one paying, boy, this is hard trying to be nondescript. So I go in and I say, hey, I got this thing happening next Wednesday. It's kind of like a church thing and about hearing God's voice. And I just love the relationship that I've heard described by your daughter. And, uh, and I, I, I would really think that this person, um, well, in fact, um, he doesn't have to come but I believe God's already sent him an invitation. In fact, last Saturday, um, in a country song. <laughs> no! <laughs> How do I do? Victory. <laughs> and, and so, with all the, f it, but at the same time, you know in your heart, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. This, this is the kind of thing that God wants done. And folks, I, I, I got people I could pull in because he's starting to do it amongst us. He's going to do it in you if he hasn't done it yet. And, and so later, <laughs> um, this week, uh, Tuesday, yep, Mission Impossible took Paula out to a movie because, yep, she loves action movies just like I do. Anyways, <laughs> taking her to the movie, I get this phone call. I'm in the car. And it's... It's Maya. And she says, Dad, so-and-so's on the phone with, with her daughter. And uh, can he call you and talk to you? And I said, he can't. Like, I'm in the car with your mother on a date. Like, I, I, can't, I can't talk to him now. Dad, he's like freaking out. I go, why? Well, because God spoke to him last Saturday in a country song. <laughs> Let's just keep driving to the movie. <laughs> dun, 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 You are all on a mission, folks. And God loves your worship. He wants your time. It, like, whatever you got, he sees the sacrifice. It's, it's like the widow with the little penny. Don't, whatever time you got that you give to God, it's like that widow that put it in. But I'm telling you, without the time, without the time, it's hard to grow intimacy. Like I can't, I can't let you hear grace without hearing the cost of time. Or I do you and your walk with the Lord at this service. But I, I would like you to kind of remember Paula and I when we were first married. It's exciting. It's wonderful. You wait long enough, he's going to talk to you. <laughs> but worship him while you wait. Praise Him. Give Him the glory. And He'll speak. And you'll know. And you will have the faith that your heart longs for. Jesus is the answer to every issue in your life. And we have the privilege of knowing them. All the people said, Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand and the priest team to come forward. ministry people um, 
those uh, leading prayer today or praying for f folks. Let's, let's do it in the corner with the angels. How's that? The big angel. So, uh, so if you're um, doing prayer ministry today, I'd invite you to... <laughs> the angels must love coffee as much as I do, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the aroma of the kingdom smells like coffee in the morning. Let's just, uh, let's open our hands. Father, we want to wash off um, the things of the day, uh, of our minds and our hearts. Um, we thank you that there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. And we just come with our hearts that love you and want to see your kingdom come and your will done on earth, God, as it is in heaven. I pray for like moments like healing frogs to, or toads to those promptings you never give up on us. You're so excited by our every move. And you love our worship. But more than that, God, you love us.